This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Hi, this is Judith Bryles. And to continue kind of the theme for this month of refreshing of where we are in publishing some tips and tidbits and tricks really that we have shared throughout the month um, in just publishing in general and the how-tos. What I wanted to come back is to really some basics and some general and just ask this simple question. Is there a book in you? Which is really what the whole premise of Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing is all about. I have always said, you know, that 80% plus of the population says they have a book in them. My response is, should it be allowed out? And that's really a critical question because the, the ease of publishing today, what can go on, what we have going on, is that anybody, and I mean anybody, can publish. The question is, should they? There's a lot of garbage out here. So how do you avoid being in the pollution bin so you rise above it? So let's just start with, is there a book in you? So think of publishing. It's literally the world's largest shopping mall. I mean, everyone's shopping this month. The main anchor stores would include, oh, places like Simon & Schuster, Random House, uh, John Wiley & Sons, McGraw-Hill, uh, Grand Central, you know, think, think of some big name publishing companies. Different sections of the mall will feature uh, genres like romance, erotica, travel, cookbooks could be in one wing, suspense, sci-fi, adventure, fantasy could be in another wing of the mall. Uh, another end will, you know, bring up all these specialties uh, graphic novels could be coming out, you know, kids' books. But think there'll be sections. And this is what kind of publishing lays out. And certain publishing houses, if you decide, for example, to go traditional, will have often specialties for uh, certain niches, or they will be generalists and they will do all of everything. Tor books, for example, T O R, that, that's sci fi. Um, would be heavily their deal, where you would think of Simon Schuster. They do a lot of everything in that. And then within these publishing houses, they have divisions that then grow hugely as well. So the question is, why do people publish a book? Why do authors, (laughs) why do we authors write them? And the reasons are huge, numerous, and they get added on to every day. One of the ways to enhance your status, and Joan Stewart and I have talked about this many times when I've had her as a guest on the show, is that it enhances your expertise. It adds to your credibility. It, it, it's a stamp across the forehead, a badge, goes on your website. It, it's all over the place. For others, it's kind of like their life's work. You can have had an epiphany, for example, of some sort. You could have experienced an amazing feat. You may be bubbling over with ideas for kids' books or even the next murder series. I mean, it, it, the ideas for authors come from just a huge basket of areas that can be pulled from. But the thing is, they're ideas. So who knows how you got there? What you do know is that you've heard the siren the calling. So someone in there, the publishing siren beckons to you and the author, what book is in you? So that's the question you need to ask. Is there a book in you? All right. So I'm going to tell you for me, it happened one night and I used to be president of a college foundation and I was having dinner. One of the perks I got was that when the celebrity authors came into town that I used to get to have dinner with them before they did their event 
and they went on and, you know, everyone loved them. And, you know, then they flew off to the next gig. So I was talking one night with this well-known columnist. He was a screenwriter. He had written several books. And we were having a really good time. And, and it turned out that our, one of our commonalities is we both had three teenagers. And for any adult who gets together with other, others who have kids in the same age arena, there is a lot to share. And when you have teenagers, there's often some pain with them too. So we were chatting away and, and I came up with this harebrained idea because I had shared a story about how my son, who was 19, and he remembered his, uh, my husband and I talking about the draft and the things that were going on during the Vietnam years. And, um, and then I, you know, I said to him, I said, you know, maybe, maybe we should have some form of the draft because it had been taken away by then. And that what we should do is, um, have a draft type of thing, a two year hiatus on driving, like in, in lieu of the draft that we would do it about with kids and that we would take away driving for like two years and we would save on gas and we would save on car insurance and we would certainly save on accidents and a variety of other things. And we, you know, had a good time chatting about it and laughing about it. And then he gave his lecture and, and we enjoyed it and we dropped him off at the airport and then we took him back to the, uh, uh, his, his hotel and I headed down to Mexico because I was speaking down there for a week. During that time, I picked up a copy of the LA Times and that as I was reading through it, oh, I saw a column and it was my dinner companion's column and in it was a caricature of a lanky teenager leaning against a car with a, with a gas pump uh, nozzle in his hand. And all my ideas were spelled out in his column. And when I returned, there was a letter from him saying, I really enjoyed meeting you and I might use some of your ideas in a future column. And I'm thinking, future column, dude, we're talking past tense. And in, and in it was signed. He ended it with cheers, Art Bookwald. Art Bookwald took my ideas, incorporated them in his column. He got paid for it, and I didn't. And the epiphany that came in was, Judith, if you don't start taking your own ideas and getting them out there, other people will. So that's what brought me to the writing. And I only was going to write one book. And I, at that time, I was a financial planner. I was teaching classes for women and money. And I thought, well, that's the logical thing. I'll just do my class and get it out there. So with that, I set about to do it. Now, I was clueless. I didn't know how to write a book. I was totally clueless. So I called one of my clients who happened to be an editor of the local newspaper and I said to him, Ed, you know, I, I, I'm thinking about writing a book. Can you help me? Would you help me? Show me how to do this. He said, I don't know how to write a book. I'm an editor. But he said, one of my sports columnists writes novels. Why don't you talk to Phil? I talked to Phil. I ended up hiring him. Now, this was in 1979, a long time ago. I paid him, can you believe this, $7,500 to coach me on how to write my book. And I'm glad I did it. It's a lot of money back then. Still a lot of money now. But it was really a lot back then. And out of that came The Woman's Guide to Financial Savvy, which I went on. He introduced me to his agent. And I, you know, I'm a former book snob thinking you only publish, only legitimate authors publish with New York. And I, we had a couple of authors. I uh, went to his agent, and we went with St. Martin's Press, and, and the book did quite well. And then from then, I went to Simon & Schuster, and, and I stayed with New York-based publishers for 18 books before another epiphany came in with a phone, another phone call when a client who I was speaking for wanted me to negotiate with the publisher to get 1,000 copies of a book that I would be speaking about and around and could I see if I could get a discount? And I had just taken back the rights to the book. So in effect, I would become the publisher. And that was the crossover where I became an independent press, Mile High Press, and started publishing my own work, which is now at number 17 under that imprint. 
And would I go back to New York? No, no, because there is multiple reasons why. But the thing is that you have to look at, is there a book in you for each one of you, how you decide to publish, whether it's traditional, whether it's a print-on-demand methodology, whether you pay someone to publish for you, a pay-to-publish operation, or you decide, by golly, you're going to take my way and I'm just going to figure out how to do this sucker myself and run with it. That's the decision you have to make and do with that. So what you want to think about is, though, what does authoring, becoming an authorpreneur, do for you? And being an authorpreneur will bring about a variety of things and that it will look at where you are in your uh, your credentialing, at your positioning. So you have to start asking some questions. And I'm going to have a series of questions I'm going to run through during this hour with you. One, what separates you from other authors? What makes you different? What will... Uh, add to your you know, credibility, your expertise, but what separates you? There's a gazillion authors that write about adventure, a gazillion that do thrillers, a gazillions that do mysteries, that do romance, etc., etc. What separates you? What's your unique twist? So what are you the expert in? Always important. Do you have work? And th this is really critical. Do you have work, the day job? or if you work at night, do you have a job that will support you, support your habit here, so you can bring it about? Because I think it's unless you've got deep pockets and you can take the time out, you're going to have to keep working at other things. So what is that other thing? And then you've got to start carving the time so you can get the writing done. For me, I'm a binge writer. I mean, I, be, I go and bang a chapter at a time. Cra you know, I just crack it out and do it. So it's very intense. And I give myself rewards for finishing it. But what, how do you do? Or, or you're someone, you know, you know every, every morning between 5 and 6, you're going to write. If you can do that, great. But you need to find what your methodology is, what works for you, not for other people. It's how you work. But you need to have some funds to be able to support it. All right. So if you're if you're a soloist, you work for yourself. So do you have clients that will keep coming in and maybe even support your new habit? Are you known as the go to person to solve a problem or consult for with others? Or, or do you feel that you're still in the pack and haven't broken out? Good questions to ask. Have you ever told anyone about what separates you from that pack? And important, have you written about it? Have you blogged about it? Do you tweet about it? Do you post on Facebook about it? W what do you do about it? Do you have your own website? Have you gotten your name domain, which is really important? You're the brand. So if your name is already taken, how about Susan Johansson author, if Susan Johansson is your name, or Mark Stevenson author, whatever it is, Maybe add author to it. We'll do that separation. All right. So I'm going to have some more questions, a lot more when we come back. This is Judith Riles. It's Author You, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Riles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Many of us have dreamed of writing a book. Some of us even have. Then the hard work starts. You'll need an editor. Who will design the cover or typeset the pages? Who will format the ebook? If you're a business owner, consultant, or coach with a serious message and expertise to share, the team of experts at 1106 Design can guide you through the maze. They've helped more than a thousand authors create top quality books and avoid the not so reputable self publishing companies. Learn more at 1106design.com. Then call Michelle at 602 866 3226. 1106 Design. Is there a book in you? For another, Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, 
you'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. First impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, the questions continue. Have you done any branding? And you know, branding can involve images, logos. Uh, maybe you have cartoons. For example, this crazy thing in my book that uh, I did, Author You, the Author Y-O-U book, uh, Creating and Building Your Author and Book uh, Platforms, that I introduced what we call affectionately, really, is the sheepy guys. Everyone loves the sheepy guys. And that my illustrator created those. Well, those sheepy guys have now reappeared in four books of mine. That they, these sheepy guys, do all kinds of things. I mean, they. I did a talk on how to be a Jedi marketer. They am now dressed as Jedi's, and so that's become part of my branding. People who know me know that I use purples and lime greens a lot. That coloring is part of my branding. They know that, you know, I they will never see me in a business suit. I don't even own a business suit. You know, I love color. I like brightness. I'm quirky. There's a gypsy in me. Um, that's how I will be on a platform or a stage. I'm a very casual person. Um, and, and that's all part of my MO. But I'm also known as being blunt and butt kicking. So if people want to create a book when I have my book shepherd hat on, they will get blunt, butt kicking, but I'll be benevolent at times, but very sage advice. My, when people come to me, my expectation is you want to get this book done. So I, I'm going to give you the work to get it done. And if you don't do it, then maybe you don't want to do the book. So that's all part of my branding on that. All right. Does the world know where and how to find you? This is so critical. You need a website. I'll go back to that. You need a website. Do you have a platform? And do you know what it is? That platform, what brings you to the party is that passion that brought you to this in the first place. It's the vision you have for yourself and your book. And believe me, the book will turn to books because books breed books. And do you have the commitment? Do you have the time? Do you have the energy? And do you have the funds that you can support supporting the book? This is critical, critical to understand. When you bring those all together, people will start discovering you. That's where all these platforms come about. 
So a, a question that you also need to ask is, <clears throat> are you creating this book to be a business card? I have a new client that we're working on, and he really is building it as the business card to expand his expertise as this. And he's an amazing entrepreneur on that, and he wants to start speaking. So he's going to have to bring his building of these multiple rehab centers out and turn them into um, his calling card. This is what I did long before I ever kissed 40 and put that out. And now he wants to take on the global trotting of a professional speaker. And then do you know the difference between traditional publishing, self-publishing, independent publishing? Do you know what these options are, what the cost factors are? And by the way, even if a traditional publisher picks you up, there are cost factors, and some of them are big, and I'm going to get into that. All right? Do you have time to commit to writing this book? And do you have the moxie and the time to position yourself and support it? So those are some of the things I think you need to ask. Now, what I wanted to dig into here in that this whole area of, you know, do you, is, is there the book into you? And I have a quiz that I put together, and there's like 14 questions to it. And just start um, throwing them at you. And, you know, kind of check. Oh, yeah, check. That's me. Check. That's me. Oh, no, I'm defessing here. So let's, let's look at some of these right here. <coughs> One, are you passionate, I just mentioned this, about your topic and your book? Your words are you. This is a huge investment in itself. You've got to love, and I'm telling you, love what you're creating. Really care about it. You think about it. You dream about it. You wake up, and it's there. Do you? It's like the difference between a job, okay, I got to go to work, I need to be there at nine, and your work. You just relish creating it, working it, manipulating it, uh, redoing it all kinds of goodies that brings you, it drives you, that you don't even think about the clock. And it's like, oh, my God, the day's gone again. Hopefully, it pays the bills. But work, it's part of your, work, it, work is part of your essence, your fabric, and it weaves into it. So, do you have passion? Number two, is being in control important to you? Now, I've discovered for me it's really important. When I was publishing with traditional publishing, you know, I, I was a kept author. I was really well cared for. But, and I didn't understand because you see, being in control with traditional publishing isn't an option. And I didn't know there was any other option <laughs> when I started publishing because there was really minimal back then in the very early 80s. So, is being in control important to you. For, for example, how your cover looks, how the back cover reads, how about how the interior looks in the presentation of the book. What about the feel of the paper? What about the feel, the quality of the paper of going on to that? Um, with traditional publishers, if you insist on that, you will become a royal pain in their backside because they don't want your input. Oh, they'll show you the cover eventually. And I will tell you, with the 18 books I published with the New Yorker, I only like two of the covers. An input on the back cover, you got to be kidding. No way. An input on the interior design, no freaking way was that going to happen. So I've discovered about me is that's critically important. And, and with all my clients I work with as a book shepherd, it's important for them too. Maybe they don't realize it, but as they can start looking at their options, and when I send them out with some of the homework that they have to do, that they realize that it's, it's part of who they want to represent because it's part of their branding that goes out. So it does become critical because one of my personal goals with every author I work with is they create a book they don't regret. And that never was something that I had with traditional. So is being in control important? Number three, is it important that your topic gets published within the next four to six months? Or is it okay to wait a year and a half to two years? Timing is critical. Traditional publishing is typically 18 months from the time you sign the contract and turn it in. Number four, 
do you have time to commit to the project? And that's really important to look at. Listen, creating a successful book takes time. It's a lot of time. If you think you can do it um, an hour a week, you're crazy. It's not going to happen. It takes time. And it's not just the writing. And authors all find out that as soon as they have that book done, they think they're done. (laughs) Oh, Oh, no, 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 no. It's just starting. The marketing, the supporting of your book, your product, is going to take a good 90% of your time. Writing it but became minor. So do you have time for the project? Number five, do you want your covers to look a certain way? For me, I never thought about covers when I first started publishing. I just, you know, because I was kept. It was going to be taken care of. For me now, it's really important. And by the way, the sooner you start on cover design, the better, even if it tweaks and changes. Why? Because you can let people know about it. You can put it up on your website. You can even create your your Amazon account and put that cover on and announce it. And people can start pre-buying in a pre-sale format. So if, if having a cover, you know, having that control on the cover, the input is really important. And I would, if I was signing with a traditional uh, publisher, I would make sure that's in my contract that you have final uh, uh, sign off approval of it. Number six, is it important to have a quality looking book? All right, not too long ago, one of my book, one of my friends who has stayed with traditional publishing for she's been publishing now for thirty years too, brought her latest book by, and it was amazing to me to see the decline in quality from the previous books. And I went and we had the same publisher. I had one of the, uh, one of my books was published with the publisher she was with now. And I went and pulled out, it was a Simon and Schuster book. And I went and pulled out the book that was published back in 1986. And the difference in the quality of the cover stock, of the interior layout, of the quality, the uh, weight of the paper was stunning. There was my book, 30 years old, still laid flat. Her book already had the cover lifting because it was so light in weight. It was amazing. So it's important to have a quality looking book. It's changed. Number seven, are you willing to make mistakes and correct them? Oh my gosh, we all make mistakes. All, every one of us. I remember when I was going back to the first time I was on Good Morning America in 1981 and I was flying back. And I thought, okay, I'll reread my book one more time um, before I'm on the show the next morning. And and I'm thinking, oh, my God, why did I write it this way? I could have written this sentence better. What was I thinking? Authors continually want to rewrite, retweak, rechange. Every author will make mistakes. Every author turned publisher makes them on a lot of them. Can you forgive yourself? Can you ID from where the error was generated? And can you self-correct it? I mean, there's always another printing, another change. So don't beat yourself up. We all make them. Whether it's a typo or an incorrect um, uh, uh, attribution or, you know, maybe the the data's changed, which it does. Maybe it does. Maybe if you're you're a fiction writer, maybe you actually screwed up something from Chapter 2 and Chapter 15. There's a... There's another change. I mean, I had one author who had a ghost he was working with, and the character's name changed three times in the book. It was kind of shocking as we went through it. But it happens. So, you know, do you have that? Are you willing to forgive mistakes? Number eight, do you have the financial resources supports to support this book? And in working with a new client this, this past week, that he says, so, so what's this going to cost? And I said, there's, you know, these are, here's my bare, these are the bare bone costs um, that's going to cost. You know, I, I estimate editing is going to be in here. I know I, I have what we do in our office called cold eye edit for our clients post layout, which we know will be $400. It's a flat $400. I know if there's going to be an index, it'll be anywhere from $500 to $1,000, depending upon the complexity of the index. I know if there is um, heavy content developmental editing, it's going to be a lot more expensive. I can add that in. I know printing. I can do guesstimate of printing, but I can't give an exact until I know how many pages we're going to have. And I get printing bids. But I can give estimates on it. 
And I mean, people can do books bare bones. I mean, I still think that one, you should have a cover design. And I, and I will tell you personally, when I'm writing my own books, that I budget $5,000 for my editing, for my cover design, and my interior design. That's what I budget. Can you do it for less? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So I do that, and then I go out into my printing bids because I will do a regular offset printing for my books. So can and if you do print on demand, it's going to be more costly per unit, but it certainly doesn't mean you're going to be forking over multi thousands of dollars. So if you do a cover design, you do a bare bones edit, which you have to do it edit. Please don't let don't let your mother, don't let your kid sister, don't let your friend who was a school teacher be your editor. You need a person who edits. And I would budget the, at least a thousand dollars for editing. Should you do a cover design? Absolutely. And I would, you know, I yeah, I think you can get a lot of really good designs in the five hundred dollar range. You don't have to spend mega thousands here. Should you have it laid out? Can you lay it out yourself? Oh yeah, you can. You can. And in fact, Joel Friedlander has some great designs that you can get for under a hundred bucks if you want to do it yourself. I'm not a DIYer, but budget. You should plan at least a couple of thousand dollars going towards this. Or, as in some of my clients, we budget because we're going to do a full print run up to $20,000. All right, we're going to be right back. We're going to talk with the rest of the questions, and we're going to get into some more goodies. Is there a book in you? This is Judith Bryles. I'm your book shepherd, and it's author you, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing, Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing questions. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, questions continue. Are you willing to learn from the pros and educate yourself? And I'm telling you, publishing is lifelong learning. 
So you do need to, you know, take advantage of the webinars that I do once a month. Um, join, please, please, please join authoru.org. There are two levels you want to go. You can start at the basic level, which is like the best cost, free, authoru.org. Now, you can listen to the webinars, but you can't get the replays. You can take advantage of the free coaching that I do every Monday at uh, noon Eastern time, every Monday morning, unless it's a national holiday, every Monday morning at noon Eastern time, um, I and Michelle DeFlippo, who is a book designer, we do free for, for our free coaching. You can call in with any question on that. So take advantage of that. And I'll just give you the number for that. It's 218-632-9854. 218-632-9854. And the magic access code is 123-987-4444. Four four. That's one two three nine eight seven four 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 four, and and then of course the pound sign. And you are in. Ask questions. Some people just call to listen to see the variety of things go on. Attend conferences. Author you does a great three day extravaganza. The dates are September fifteenth through seventeenth this year. Take advantage of that, and and just that's an investment. You have to keep investing in yourself. Follow blogs of some of the leaders, Joan Stewart, Joel Friedlander, follow my blog. Take advantage of all this out here because let me tell you, it makes a huge difference. Next question is, are you persistent? <laughs> this needs to be in your DNA. You need to be persistent to keep going after things. And, and one of the things, in question number 11, this is where I see so many I, authors almost look, you know, it's the deer in the headlight situation when I say, well, so who is your reader? Who is your buyer? I will tell authors, okay, you're right away on your laptop, on your desktop, your computer, whatever. Stop. Look up. Your reader is directly across from you. Who is she? Who is he? What do they look like? What are their hopes? What are their fears? What's their pain? You need to know what your reader's pain is. I don't care if you write fiction or nonfiction. Pain brings rewards solutions whether it's is a fiction you're entertaining that's you know i need to drop out for a few hours i'm looking for a great read that's my pain and you're going to supply it for nonfiction, you know you've got a problem and you're going to supply those solutions or you're going to educate you're going to do something so what's the pain who's the reader are they married are they single are they divorced you know what, what what's their habits the more you know about them, it will ease your writing capability and it will super soar you in your marketing capabilities. You will target it in. I have always said the more you niche yourself, the bigger your market becomes. The more you focus on becoming the whale in the pond versus the sardar, sardine in the mass sea, you're going to do far better than most do. Which is question number 12. Do you have a niche? You know, you want to niche yourself and bring that in. And then 13, hey, do you want to make money? Would you like to make money? And you need to understand this. This is where we start separating these different types of publishing is that in making money, if you go with a traditional publisher, a contract that will, you know, these, and, and I, I mentioned that there were reasons why I didn't publish anymore with traditional. There are four of them. One is control. I've already gone through that. How a book looks, the quality, control, and quality is really important to me. Control is I want to be able to have input. Quality is really critical. I want my book to feel right. You know, I'm a big believer in print. Almost 70% of all books that are sold are printed books. And even if you're thinking, oh, I was only going to do an ebook, I'm only going to do an ebook, don't go down that path. For heaven's sakes, create the version that goes on print on demand that you'll have where 70% of the buyers are looking for print books. Why would you want to leave that market out? You don't. So that if you are with a traditional publisher, understand this, that you are going to get anywhere um, for a paper, paper version, anywhere from 6 to 9% on your trade paper. If it's a hardback, it's 10 to 15%, and that's based on volume. 
um, five five uh, five thousand or less, ten percent. Five to ten would be twelve and a half. Over ten thousand would be fifteen percent. You know what the odds of you selling ten thousand books are really low. The typical traditionally published book today sells less than five thousand copies lifetime. So I'm going to get ten percent. Let's say my book is twenty dollars. Let's use things that are easy. We can multiply. They pay you on the net amount they get. Typically, that's going to be anywhere from 45, max 50% of the retail price. So that means we just brought ourselves down to 9 to $10. And I'm going to get 10% of that. So roughly, I'm going to get 90 cents to a buck a book. That's it. That's it. So then you start looking at other options. So those other two components that, you know, control and quality, money was the third of why I created my own press. And the fourth, the fourth was the timing that a lot of my stuff I want to get out. And I know typically when I work with an author and they bring in a completed manuscript and I can move it to editing, I know that I can have their book in hand within four months. So timing, if you want to get that book out and really start pushing, you don't want to wait a year and a half, you got to go outside the traditional publishing box. Number 14, and this is really critical, is are you willing to learn about the business of publishing? And this is really where it's at. You've got to learn about the business of publishing. And, uh, and if you're not willing to put the time and the energy, and there's lots of people out there, including myself, to teach you, to learn about it, to educate you, that you will be way ahead of the game. So those are those key questions. I just threw a whole bunch at you uh, to get going on this, to move into that. So with that, then let's just start a probing into some other options now and that uh, where we're going and, and really what's happening with publishing because it has evolved. It's, it's going through an evolution revolution. I don't, I don't know where the big players are. There, you know, there used to be the big eight uh, there used to be Big Ten. There was the Big Eight, Big Seven. I think we're down now to the Big Five of, of the publishers as they continue to consolidate. You're seeing online, certainly Amazon with its create space and the self-publishing model. Ingram Spark is huge. <coughs> Excuse me. Huge, huge time uh, going on with this. And then you have, uh, uh, and those are print-on-demand, self-publishing, print-on-demand. If I was to choose between the two, I would definitely go to Ingram Spark. The quality is better. Consistency is better. If you're a member of Author U, and I mentioned the basic was free, you want to really join the gold level um, where you get a lot more um, on your plate. And plus you get huge benefits coming along that, that uh, you get discounts with Ingram Spark and you can take advantage of that which brings you below the cost of Amazon's create space. Ingram Sparks feeds right into uh, supplying any orders that come through Amazon. So there's a lot you can do um, on this plate of which way to go. But let, let's, you know, the ebook, everyone thought ebooks were going to wipe out books, print books. They haven't. Ebooks are flat in the sales in a lot of areas. Tablets certainly. Mobile, you have to make your books available that they can they be read on mobile, although it blows me away to think that people are reading books on their cell phones. So, um, but that's, you know, and that's the younger generation. <coughs> so, which is for you? I think that you should print a book. I think you should have an ebook, um, And then you should certainly consider an audio book. And we did a show with Richard Riemann a few months ago on how you put a book out. And, and act, Riemann actually has a book um, coming out here, a guide to how to create your own audio book uh, that will be available here in another month, which is pretty exciting, I think. And it's called The Author's Guide to Audio Books, Creating Audio Books, which was, is uh, kind of exciting. And I'm doing the final edits on that, literally. Um, finished it up today. So it's gone off to the designer for layout. So you want to have an ebook, consider an audiobook, definitely do a print book. And, and the video books are coming along. You know, maybe you are going to read 
Um, or maybe you're going to illustrate your book and have it out. But the bottom line is you have a lot of options out there and decide where to go. So let's let's look at some of these players who we have here. Um, and and that and I've mentioned let's let's come back to the traditional, which is where it started. And and I grew up thinking that's the only way a legitimate author published was through the traditional publishers. So that was my mode. That was my model. I'm hearing less and less authors saying they want to have a traditional publisher and that they're really going to do it on their own, but they have to learn it. So those are some of the things that we've been talking about in this learning side of it. So when you uh, go with a traditional publisher, traditionally you come through the door with an agent I mean, coming in into it and finding an agent. And there's plenty of resources um, that you, you know, uh, Mark Malatesta, who I've had on the show before, who really does work with you on creating a query letter to snag an agent. And his website is bestsellingauthor.com and bringing that up and bringing that along. Now, the advantages of a traditional publisher is that you have the affiliation. A lot of people think that it's really important to have that. I'm going to counter that because, I mean, as someone who is a prolific reader, that the last time I went and bought a book because Simon & Schuster published it was Zelch, maybe my own book, Zelch. You buy a book because it eases your pain. It solves a problem. It's an author you follow. The publisher is irrelevant, irrelevant. But a lot of authors really believe it. A lot of authors really believe, well, they'll get me a national distribution. You can do that. It's not difficult. Ingram Spark will bring you national distribution. Bookstores know Ingram well, and they like Ingram. They will order. Independent bookstores will easily order from Ingram. They also order from the publisher, which could be you. So that's one thing. The other thing is that because of the change in publishing, and I'll end this before we take our next break, that traditional publishers, if you get an, an advance, and the advances have decreased substantially over the years, if you get any advance, they expect you to do the marketing. And they expect you to do the marketing anyway. So that you're thinking that, and where I started with publishing, the publisher did all the marketing. I didn't have to do any of that. That is no longer the rule. The rule is the publisher is not interested in an author unless you have got the marketing power behind you and the game plan to go out and hustle and move that book, which is critical to understand. Now, what they do do for you is they do print the book. They do a cursory edit it. They don't do the depth of editing they used to do. And if it starts clicking and selling well because you've worked your tush off marketing, then they may come in and come in and support you in the marketing. But other than that, a lot of publishers have become primarily layout and printers and I have given you a window to national distribution if a bookstore um, wants to carry it. But as my friend Dan Pointer, who recently passed away, has always said, bookstores are a lousy place to sell books. And we'll end our break on this. We'll come right back with more ideas as we end up the show. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need The Book Shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 
303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207. Or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from one to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book... If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Now, one of the things that the traditional publisher will do is they take care of ISBNs and copyright and Library of Congress numbers and all that. But that's all, believe me, no-brainer stuff that you can do yourself. So traditional publishing, there is this illusion of credibility. They do front the cost, you know, the printing cost. Um, and they don't print a lot of copies, let me tell you. They don't print a lot of copies. They pay you twice a year. They always hold back some money because bookstores return books, and by the way, they do. Um, And bookstores, by the way, buy books. They don't buy books. They take them on consignment. They have a window. The window could be as open as six months. That window could literally uh, literally close. And that I used to always say, the last thing I'd want to see is an order for 5,000 books from Barnes & Noble because I know... 80% Uh, 80% of them will be returned in a month because that's what they do. They keep moving their shelves. And if you've been in a bookstore, in some many cases, there's less shelf space. But they have a lot of, lot of open other areas. They are, they're selling a lot of other stuff in these bookstores. So I would encourage you, uh, if you're going to uh, consider traditional publishing, one, you get offered huge money. They need, you know, John Grissom said that when he sold his books to Hollywood for film, he didn't care what they did because they gave him so much money, it it didn't matter anymore. You're a star, and publishers will or mesmerized by your persona, so that's the the credibility, the movie star, celebrity thing. You may be a bit of a snob like I used to be, thought that was the only way you needed to go and your ego wanted it. Um, It could be that you just want to write a book and you want someone else to take care of everything else. It, it, but, but the reality is you still got to work your tush off. Just keep that in mind. Now, self-publishers, and there's a difference between me and, and uh, when I think of self-publishing and independent publishing, a lot of the vanity presses, the pay-to-publish group where you pay, uh, pay someone, they may get you in the door for you get our special for $597, and they upsell you up to the gazoo, and all of a sudden you're in for many, many, many thousands of dollars. But... You know, self-publishing people, a lot of really good people started. Like Tom Peters started self-publishing. When he rolled out In Search of Excellence in the self-publishing format, it was then picked up by a New York house. And by the way, they probably, I can't remember, was it 10,000 or so copies they printed at the time? Tom bought most of them and re-pushed them out to everyone, and that's what he seeded. Now we're talking about the financial commitment. 
that goes into that. Ken Blanchard of the One Minute Manus series, I'm talking business books, he started on the kitchen table. And the, the perennial, annual, annual bestseller, What Color Is My Pillar Shoot, Dealing With Careers, they were all self-published. And in, in the fiction line, you know, E.L. James's Fifty Shades of Grey, it was started out as self-published before it was moved and picked up. So there's no stigma in starting in self-published. And what it allows you to do is learn how to market, to move it out, to get a buzz started, to get the chatter out there. And then, who knows, someone may come and knock on your door saying, we want to buy your book. And there's really strategies that you can do that locally with bookstores that carry their own bestseller list. You can push people to buy their book through their store and keep you on the list. And let me tell you, the sales reps for these companies pay attention to the list and you might get a call if you use that strategy. You want to consider self-publishing if you really plan on doing just one book. I'm going to suggest that. Um, you plan on printing a very limited number of copies or you're doing print on demand. Your primary goal is not really to make money because you won't make money in that kind of arena. You consider publishing really a true, it's an avocation, not, it's not going to the vocational side. Maybe you want to do a test to see if there's any interest in your book. Um, and maybe you didn't know there was any other way and no one really talked to you about creating your own publishing company, which is not that difficult. So let's talk about that now. Independent publishers um, is that they, they create their own imprint, what we call it, an imprint. And it's it, it, it can be done for a single book, but as I said earlier, often books breed more books and they start rolling along. So you, you know, I would have my designer create a logo for my, my press, which I'd have them do, and we've actually redone it twice. Um, independent publishing is... I mean, my goals, if I had bullets, it would be uh, you want to be financially successful in my publishing. I, I'm willing to make that financial commit. I mean, I understand that I'm going to have to have designers cover people. Um, I'm going to have to warehouse books or find someone to warehouse for me. And we certainly uh, yeah, have those contacts. Um, I'm, I was willing to learn about publishing. And, and I've always felt that one of the, my best assets is I did start out traditional publishing because I've had my feet in both doors and I really get it um, and understand it. And so the, the, because I was in the old days of publishing where I really was taken care of and the quality was better, what I did is I brought that to the party when I started my own press, that my uh, the quality of my books has never declined. I'm not, you know, I don't do things cheap and that that I can match what I did back, you know, 20, 30 years ago in the quality. Um, are you willing to work your tush off? You will, you will. And you're not a publishing snob. Or uh, as I said, I'm a recovered publishing snob. So I went that route. But there's a lot of work in learning it and you have to, you work with someone either that has a team of people that they can refer you to for the design, the cover, and all that. I don't do that. I know what I like. And I certainly work with people on the team to do input with each of the clients that I work with. Um, because I do have a vision a lot of times. I see books when they come in um, and get the feel for them. All right, what about the this new thing called the pay-to-publish operation? Uh, the subsidy uh, uh, publishers. And they're really not publishers. They're just vendors that then outsource your stuff, or maybe they have it internal, who knows. But they charge you either a set fee or they have a menu where they do add-ons. And I think what you have to put yourself in, don't expect miracles here. They, it's all template publishing versus having your own personalized, customized template just for your book. So the uh, oftentimes with pay to publish, they may give you two or three passes at the cover and that's it. You don't get any more changes so that they'll design it and they'll, they'll take your input, but you only get to do it a couple more times. Uh, or if you keep tweaking and changing it, then you have more charges. And I know typically with the book cover designers I work with, we keep working on this bloody cover until it is there. And I, you know, one cover, we had 21 different passes until 
uh, it got it right for a book that I just uh, the the book called The Las Vegas Madam that we just went to publication on this month. That as we were getting ready to send it to the printer, I said to the, the 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 cover designer, I said, "Wait, wait, wait! I have one more idea. How about on the back cover instead of having this vertical call out that we did with the endorser, can you do it uh, horizontal? Can you do it vertical? And then what I want you to do is wrap wrap it the color into the spine so it'll make the word madam pop better." And we tested it, we looked at it, and was like, oh, my God, why didn't we think of this earlier? It was just that last-minute tweak. That would never happen with a traditional publisher. It would never happen with a pay-to-publish. But, you know, as an independent, we could pull it off with the people we work with. All right, if you're not fussy about how your book really looks or feels, you're kind of, you know, take what they take. Um, and if you understand clearly, you need to understand clearly the pay to publish, they're using their own ISBNs. They really do control it. You don't as an independent, you get your, a bank of ISBNs from Bowker or, or you go to myidentifiers.com. If you're a member of author, you, you get a discount, um, that it, you, you know, you're going to apply for your library of Congress number. Um, and you have that, but it's yours. You control that. You control it, if that. Now, there's other people that are book packagers that go out, um, and book pa- packagers are really great to look with. I know I do some of the things that a book packager would do because a lot of the clients that we have when we first start with are kind of clueless and that they're just not sure of this. So um, you need to really look at where we are um, on this and bring that into play. And then you've got, you know, do we just go E? I've already told you I don't think you should just go into E publishing um, for that. It's a mistake. You need to offer it together. So when that publishing siren comes into play, one of the things that you've got to do is be aware that you've got to do some pre-work. You've got to have a plan together. You're going to have an editor, please, a professional editor, and make sure that they do editing in your genre. Get a sample. Get a sample so you can see how it looks to you, how it feels to you. Um, Know that you need that interior and that cover together, knowing that different printers do different types of books better. For example, if I have a book that's color, I'm probably going to China or Korea with it. It's going to be a lot less. Now, in North America, there are some book uh, uh, printers that can really, your manufacturers are called also, that can bring it in a little bit less, but it's a timing. If I go to China, it's three months. If I go to Korea, it's two months. If I stay in North America, it's probably four weeks. So I'm looking at that. It's really important to understand you got to stay visible. You're going to be working. You're going to be becoming a marketing expert. And here's what also, and, and I'm going to do a wrap here. What's really important is that you need to pull, be willing to pull the plug, even if you've already put some money out. Hey, if it's not working with the group, with the individuals, if it's not a right fit, if they don't get it, if you feel like you've got to get on your your gloves and fight with them, you need to say, I'm going to move on. Get your work and go somewhere else. And, you know, what did I learn? Um, What didn't work? What worked? and, and, And take it from there. So I I wanted to do a wrap up, bring this together of some of the things that you need to do to be a successful author, digging out, is there a book in you? And the bottom line goal is to create that book you never regret. This is Judith Bryles. It's Author You, your guide to book publishing. We'll be with you next week. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week, a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take you, the author, to the next level. You'll learn tips and secrets on how to create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve book publishing success by making one very simple change in your book's journey. How to avoid the publishing predators. How to create an author and book platform that rocks. Learn how to make a living with your words and your books. Learn how to publish a book that has no regrets and so much more. For more information, check out AuthorU.org, where authors who want to be seriously successful go. And Judith's website, TheBookShepherd.com. 
Then join us again here next week for more. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Brought to you by Author You and the Book Shepherd. Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific on the Rockstar Radio Network.